Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, we have a fantastic show for you tonight. We've got Kentucky coal miners, a Tennessee singer, a clarinet, and a massive international single. All of this adds up to the story of... 16 tons! 16 tons, yes. I'm Tex Madison. Welcome to the 60s. One, two, three, four! Yes, it's the 60s. Today featuring 16 tons, perhaps the most lyrically depressed song of all time. What about Suicide Solution by Ozzy Osbourne? That hasn't been written yet. This is the 60s. Is 16 tons a song from the 60s? Well... I'm kind of glad you asked. The 1960s saw countless versions of 16 Tons emerge. Bo Diddley, Jimmy Dean, Lauren Green, Stevie Wonder, and Tom Jones are just a few of the artists that recorded it then, but it was in fact written far earlier than that decade. So, the song, the artist, and the year. That should be easy enough. Well, not quite. The song is attributed to old-time country star Merle Travis, who's now in the Country Music Hall of Fame, and the commercial rights are registered in his name. He first recorded it August 8th, 1946 in Hollywood, California for his album Folk Songs of the Hills. The song is about the life of a coal miner based on life in the coal mines of Muhlenberg, Kentucky. Thing is, George S. Davis, a folk singer, claimed on a 1966 recording that he had written the song back in the 1930s, though it was called 9 to 10 tons. At another time, he claimed to have written it as 21 tons. Now, there is no evidence to support this claim, though Davis had actually worked as a Kentucky coal miner. His version appeared on the album When Kentucky Had No Union Men with slightly different lyrics from Travis's version, though under the name 16 Tons. But just for the sake of argument, let's just say Merle Travis wrote it. Merle Travis wrote it. And let's just say he knew what he was talking about. He knew what he was talking about. And let's just stop doing that. Thank you. No problem. But the most famous version, the iconic version, was not recorded for nearly a decade after the Travis original. This version was recorded in 1955 by Tennessee Ernie Ford and became a monster hit. Funny thing, though, it was recorded as a B-side and was not intended to be a hit. But hit it was. Released October 17th, it shot to number one on the Billboard country charts in November and held that position for ten weeks. Then it crossed over to the pop charts for eight weeks. It even crossed over to the UK, where it held the number one spot for four weeks in January and February 1956. I want to hear about the depressing lyrical content. Of course you do, Little Miss Lonely. And here to tell you about the life of a Kentucky coal miner is Kentucky coal miner and correspondent, you. Are you still there, Little Miss Lonely? I am indeed. Great to be here. And where exactly is here? Here is Kentucky mining country. Where is in front of the company store and when is the early 20th century? Okay, I see. And, and uh, why? The song repeatedly refers to what was known as the truck system. Under this system, the coal miners were not paid in cash, but with non-transferable credit vouchers that could only be used by goods at the company store. This made it impossible for the workers to ever have savings, and uh, they were basically stuck working for life at the mine. Huh. They also lived in company-owned houses or dorms, and the, uh, the rent was deducted from their pay. This practice lasted until the unions could finally put an end to it. Aha! And that is why Davis's version is on an album called When Kentucky Had No Union Men. Right. Right. Okay, well, thank you, Little Miss Lonely, for enlightening us. And now, a word from our sponsors. Where can you buy makeup? Where can you buy medicine? Where can you buy liquor? At Dr. Johnny L's Company Store. That's right, come on down. We got every single thing you need for your coal miner's life. If we don't have it, you, you don't, don't need it. it. I'll tell you what you need and sell you what you need. And you don't even have to bring cash. We got it all covered. I'll be your Dr. L customer until the day I die. And even a little bit after that, even. Dr. L's company store. Because what's yours is mine. <laughs> and we're back, ladies and gentlemen, still talking about the smash hit, 16 Tons. Now, that 1955 version, why do you suppose it became such a monster hit? Was it Ford's snapping fingers, or was it the unlikely choice of a clarinet-driven arrangement? Well, whatever it was, it caught on and caught on big. Maybe it was the lyrics, and to explain a bit about the lyrics, I'm going to call Kentucky-born actor Harry Dean Stanton. I got the number right here on my moon phone. Let's see. Five, 
two. Oh. It's ringing. Hey, uh, Harry? Uh, no, I'm not named Harry. Well, c- can I can I call you Harry? Sure, why not? Okay, Harry. Uh, you know the song 16 Tons? Oh yeah, it's a classic. You know the line, uh, you load 16 tons and what do you get? Another day older and deeper mm-hmm. in debt? Mm-hmm. It came from a letter written by Merle Travis' brother John. I was not aware of that. Another line was inspired by his father, who was a coal miner who said things like, I can't afford to die. I owe my soul to the company store. So that's where that came from. Right. Yeah. And okay. Well, on that happy note, I'll just say thank you very much. Not Harry Dean Stanton. Okay, time's up, folks. That's all for now from the 60s. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not? It's not. Nope. Hi, I'm Dr. L of the Madman Band, but that's not important. What is important is these two things. John Denver recorded a parody version of the song called 18 Holes, which is about golf. I'm stunned. St. Andrew, don't you call me cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the country club pro. This will cheer you up, Tex. There is a club called 16 Tons in Moscow, and the Ford version is played before each and every concert held there. Yeah. Yeah, that did the trick. You're welcome. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our time really is up for today. But I'd like to thank Little Miss Lonely, Dr. Johnny L, the Mad Men Band, not Harry Dean Stanton, and of course our sponsor, Dr. L's Company Store, and our producers, Porter and Terrell Syndrome, Tinstream, and Megapixel. Now, if there is anything else worth knowing about 16 Tons that we haven't covered, or if there is anything else on your 60s mind, Tell us in the comments. Listen to the Mad Men Band's version of 16 Tons right here. And listen to a few other versions like Merle Travis or Tennessee Ernie Ford's right here. Do not forget to subscribe. And remember, you are always welcome back to the 60s. See you soon. One, two, three, four!